Hello and welcome to the second devotion on spiritual warfare. Today is Tuesday, June 2nd of 2020. And those of you who are part of our church congregation know that I've been preaching on spiritual warfare. And this uh, last Sunday was the third Sunday in that sermon series. I've been listening to Dr. David Jeremiah and to Dr. Michael Heisner and to some other sources using some of the dictionaries that I have available on Pauline literature and things of that nature as I work through the issues of spiritual warfare. And the text is from Ephesians chapter 6, and in Ephesians chapter 6 it says, finally, this is verse 10 through 12, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And then he's going to say, therefore, take up the armor of God. But as we think about this yesterday, I talked about wrestling. And if any of you know anything about wrestling, you know that wrestling is hard. It is difficult. There is nothing easy about wrestling. And the wrestling that we are doing in terms of this spiritual warfare is we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against our passions. We are wrestling against the influences of Satan and, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms and his methods and his ways of doing things. And it's a struggle because there is within each of us an inclination towards that which is wrong. It's a part of our fallen nature. Now, as Christians, we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And we are being sanctified. And as a church of the Nazarene, we believe in holiness of heart and mind and life. And we don't believe that we are enslaved to sin any longer. But we have to acknowledge that we are still struggling with our own passions and our own lusts and our own inclinations. And we have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. In fact, that's the point at the beginning of this scripture. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. On Sunday, I talked about that. And it's an imperative, but it's a passive voice. And so it really would be better rendered, be empowered by the Lord and by his might, the strength of his might. And so this is, a, this is a war we can't win on our own. The war has already been won by God, but we live on the battlefield. And the battlefield actually rages within us just as much as around us. And it's not a battle against flesh and blood, but it's a battle against the spiritual forces of wickedness. And we are striving as children of light to come under the leadership and the authority of Jesus Christ to be reconciled to one another. And so as we think about the methods of the kingdom of darkness versus the methods of the kingdom of light, the kingdom of light operates out of unity, love, and peace. The kingdom of darkness operates out of division, hate, and violence. And so when we think about our actions and we think about wrestling, one of the things that we're having to do is we're having to, to wrestle against our passions that might get involved in the wrong way and fight um, a battle in the wrong way. And, you know, this, this last week we've seen a tremendous crime committed against a black man predominantly because of the color of his skin, and that is just unconscionable. It was completely wrong. And as far as I can tell, the response of anybody who saw the videos on that would agree with that. What happened was immoral and it was wrong. It was straight out of the forces of the kingdom of darkness and wickedness. But now we need to respond. And how do we respond? How do we wage war against those kingdoms of darkness? And we have to be really careful that we don't slide into responding with the forces of wickedness instead of responding with the kingdom of light. And so here's just some things as we're talking about tactics for 
warfare in this and tactics as we wrestle against the enemy. We have to recognize what the tactics are. And so God's tactics are unity. He desires to bring us together. In fact, earlier in Ephesians chapter 2, it says in chapter 2, verses 13 and following, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. One of the things that it's really important to understand is that when we come to human beings, we need to see each other as loved creatures created in the image of God and for the glory of God, that each of us has value, each of us has purpose, each of us has meaning, and that we need to break down the barriers, the walls that divide us. And we do that through love and through seeking unity and grace and things of that nature. So God is breaking down the, the wall of hostility, but Satan is striving to raise the wall of hostility and create racism and and create animosity and tension. God is using love, self-sacrificial giving of, of another for the good of the other, thinking more highly of them than you think of yourself. Love is a weapon and a tool and a way of operating a tactic within the kingdom of light, whereas hate, division, dissension, envy, bitterness, factions, all that, dissensions, all of that stuff is from the kingdom of evil, from wickedness. And that, that's a tactic within the enemy's kingdom. And so we have to wrestle against using those kinds of responses and those ways of responding. And then, of course, within the kingdom of light, you respond with peace, trying to inculcate harmony and unity and wholeness, which includes justice. And justice is really important. But as we do that, we have to be careful that we don't swing into violence, that we don't um, turn to a vigilante kind of a response to everything, that instead we seek to overcome the forces of wickedness with the principles of the kingdom of light. And so another aspect within that would be forgiveness instead of revenge. And we need to operate in that way and we need to try and, and give that so that there is a possibility of reconciliation. Now, forgiveness isn't forgetting and forgiveness is not putting the seal of approval on anything. What happened, especially in Minneapolis, the way that that took place, it was, it was completely immoral and it was completely wrong. And the perpetrators of that crime do need to suffer the consequences of their behavior. But we need to make sure that we don't take um, the authority into our own hands, that we respond in a different way, that we respond with love, with forgiveness, with peace, with a, a sense of str striving to understand the brokenness of humanity and trying to restore human beings to one another and to God and to right relationship. So. As we think about tactics, as we think about wrestling against the spiritual forces, we need to examine our own life and see, okay, am I, am I drifting in to the tactics of the kingdom of darkness? Or am I drifting in choosing to operate out of the tactics of the kingdom of light? It's a battle and we're going to have to work at it. And there are no easy answers to the kind of division and the kind of brokenness that we experience in our country right now. But we need to engage this battle. And we need to recognize that the enemy is not the other people. The enemy are these spiritual forces of wickedness. And they oftentimes get a hold of our passions and lead us astray and entice us. So today, as you operate as a warrior for the kingdom of light, I just invite you to walk in unity, love, peace, and forgiveness. God bless you today as you strive to walk in the tactics of the kingdom of light.